So those are the numbers right now. Let's bring in Brad Blakeman, former deputy assistant to President George W. Bush, Bernard Whitman, former Bill Clinton pollster and author of 52 Reasons to Vote for Hillary Clinton. Why not 53? I guess we'll find out from Bernard. <laughs> I want to leave some for We know Brad. where you stand, Bernard. We always do, which we appreciate. Brad, uh, we know there's some limitation to poll numbers at this point in time, but you'd rather be up than down. How does Donald Trump turn this around? He needs to stick to policy, and he has to uh, stop the self-inflicted wounds of, of uh, forced errors on his part. If you're if you're defending, you're not an offense. An offense, you need to score. Look, there's plenty of fodder out there to attack Hillary Clinton. Uh, Donald, Donald Trump has to realize it's not the Republicans who are the enemy. It is Hillary Clinton. It's not Obama who's the enemy because he's not standing for election. It's Hillary Clinton who will be the third term of Obama. If he sticks to that and he sticks to policy and has a affirmative agenda that the American people can point to, especially on the economy and national security, he can turn it around. But he can turn it around if every time he puts his foot in his mouth, he has spent the th next three days defending what he said. And eventually he has to retract it like he did uh, his most recent a gaffe saying that Obama founded ISIS and he said now it was just a satire right, and everybody knows or sarcasm right. and he knows that nobody's buying that. Well so that's one of the big stories this week for Donald Trump of course one of the big stories for Hillary Clinton Bernard are these these emails that maybe show a connection between the State Department and her foundation at least that's what her critics are alleging at this time. Donald Trump's not hyper focused on that right now but Hillary Clinton is going to have to, is going to have to face questions on that in the debates and otherwise. What sort of challenge does that pose to her? I don't think it poses any challenge at all because there is no there there. Cheryl Mills is a private citizen, took a train trip to New York to interview someone for the head of the Clinton Foundation. She's known the Clintons for decades. There's nothing wrong she did on her own expense. Donald Trump's campaign is a smorgasbord of insanity. I mean, I have never seen anything like this in more than 30 years in politics. He has gotten so extraordinarily unglued, unhinged, barely three weeks after being nominated. Can you imagine what he'd be like three months after being in the Oval Office? The temperament that he has shown on the campaign trail underscores just how unfit he is for office. I mean, it's absolutely incredible to me. He says things like, well, the only way I'm going to get into heaven is to be elected president. You know, let's have military tribunals for American citizens, which is illegal. Let's engage in torture, which is illegal. Let's offend virtually every population that I can, disabled, women, minorities. I mean, it, the, the list just goes on and on and on. And honestly, the biggest indictment comes not from Democrats, but from this letter that was released yesterday. Seventy former RNC officials, elected uh, former officials and staffers, basically saying Donald Trump is going to bring us down in flames, abandon ship now. Well, and there, the, the, the issue, Brad, is also about funding, whether or not the RNC will continue to support Donald Trump or is going to support other candidates. At least these are some of the reports that are swirling right now. And quite frankly, it's a little hard to sort out what's the truth and what are some reports at the time. I turn to our viewers because we don't really talk to our viewers as much as we'd like. Uh, and these are supporters of Donald Trump, Brad. And here's what they have to say about why they're standing by their candidate. Nick says he's new. Whatever we've been doing clearly doesn't work and we need someone with a fresh take. Lauren Warren says Trump will create jobs. Trump will repeal and replace Obamacare. Davis says, I believe he truly loves this country. You can't pull that. Susie says, we need a president who can clean up the mess that is our federal government. I mean, these are voices from real people that still believe in Donald Trump, despite what columnists or, or what some can call the beltway elite are saying. They're still showing up for these Trump rallies. They're still there. What about that, Brad? What about that factor? Look He's got a strong base of support, but a base of support is not enough to win. And Donald Trump has to realize that he has a short time in order to turn this around. And I'm talking about the polls in the battleground states. The first week after September will tell the tale. And if we see these numbers continue to slide in battleground states like Florida and Ohio and Pennsylvania, it's going to cause serious doubt. And then the RNC is going to have to make a decision. Do they cut their losses? It's a business decision. Trump knows that as a businessman. If your investment isn't going your way, then you have to reinvest. And that means that money that originally was going to go to Donald Trump is now going to be targeted to the House members, the shoring up the Senate and down ballot state and local elections. 
Look, the RNC cannot put all their eggs in the Trump basket if the investment isn't paying off. And we can't go down with the ship. We have to save the down ballot candidates. So my hope, and I'm a Trump supporter, is that he's going to be able to turn this thing around. No more forced errors. Stick to policy. Stick to Hillary Clinton. And you're going to do fabulously well because her record is an absolute disaster. What about her record, Bernard? What about focusing on those policies? What do you think is her biggest challenge moving ahead? I think her biggest challenge moving ahead is making clear to the American people that her economic plan is going to work for the average person. If you look at Donald Trump's tax plan, it does a couple things. One, it clearly advantages Donald Trump. Number two, it would bring record deficits. Independent policy experts have agreed on that. And I think she needs to continue to make the positive case for how she would steward the economy, create change, build jobs and, and move this country forward and bring the country together after a tremendously divisive campaign. If you look at these battleground states, I mean, I think that, you know, I, I appreciate uh, Brad's uh, commitment to Trump, but I mean, it's a lot of happy talk. He is down double digits in states like Virginia and Colorado that he has to win. States like Arizona are in play, Utah is in play, North Carolina, Georgia is in play. This is is pretending to be an electoral landslide for Hillary Clinton. Well, and we'll even see. with Marco Rubio back in the race, I think George, uh, I think um, Mitch McConnell is now worried that the Senate is going to fall into the Democrats. Well, we, we shall see. It's been an unconventional uh, campaign season thus far. So it's uh, it's fair to say anything can happen from this point. I think we've all seen that. Brad yeah, and but Bernard, a warning. Great. A warning to Bernard. Don't count your chickens. And by the way, Donald Trump's biggest strength is being underestimated. 16 other people underestimated it, and look where they are. I don't understand it. We've got to go out and vote and keep the insanity out of the White House. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Who shows up? Uh, Brad, Bernard, thank you very much. Thanks, Look forward to having you back.